Okay, I'm pa Paul Hunt. Uh, I, I'm in charge of uh, Font Utilities Group, I guess, and uh, and I'm working on the airflow calorimeter. We, we, we've played with all kinds of different calorimeters, and uh, it always ended up that 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 I ended up. Uh, dumping the heat in the air anyway, and I thought, well, let's just dump the heat straight in the air and let's measure it. And a lot of people say, that's pretty difficult to actually accurately measure heat with airflow. And there's, it's really tricky, and I'm going, well, we've got a lot of tricks in this one. We're going to show s s s some, of the, some of the tricks. The airflow calorimeter is this basic box over here. And the main idea is the air flows in one side, flows past our unit under test, which goes in this ch 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 chamber here, and then flows out the other end. As it comes in, first, first there's an air, air filter here. And then once it gets past that, it c comes in past a heater. This is a custom wound heater. It, and its main job is to heat, Heat the air just a little bit above room temperature. So this heater's main job is to heat the incoming air just a little bit above room temperature. And that way we make sure that it's a real constant temperature as it comes in. So this is really super smooth. The air flows through that and heats very evenly. And the next bet is, is the air comes in and flows through this sensor. This is a sensor that's also very smooth. This is a 150 foot long RTD. Most R RTD sensors are about the s s s s s s size of a pinhead. This one's 150 feet long, so it, it'll sense every part of the air. And as long as the air is either a smooth flow or a smooth temperature, we're going to be accurate. We're shooting for both, of course. Now, this can pick up heat for, from the air flowing over it, but it can also pick up some from a little, little bit of radiation coming from hot things, like the heater next to it, which, by the way, is only mildly warm. So we, we have a baffle. This goes on both sides of the sensor. It's easy to blow air through it. It's got lots of channels that are V-shaped. So the air blows through easy. The light d d does not. And the radiated heat does not. So this gets sandwiched in between two of these. And as a unit, it plugs in here. So we have the heater, baffle, sensor, baffle. Then we have another heater it heats the air up approximately one degree to a very precise temperature. It, it's going to be as, as tight as, as our control loop can make it. And coming in, it's, it's, it's already very, very tight, but, but better than a tenth of a degree. After that heater that raises the temperature by around one degree, we sense it again with a with a baffle sensor combination. And we use that to, 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 to c c control the power going to, to this heater. And we extremely carefully measure the amount of power going in this heater. So now we know the exact t t t temperature rise before and after the heater and the exact amount of power. So we know how, how how much, how, how many watts it takes to, to raise the air temperature by around, by, by around one degree. And that's happening all the time. It happens live while, while, while it's in play. Then it goes through a few of these baffles. The best job is to smooth out the, the air flow and the temperature distribution. And by the way, all these things sl sliding card channels because this is a prototype. We, we, we don't know what, what exact layout works best. 
so we can move stuff around. After the baffles, it goes through a fan. The fan moves, moves the, 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 the air through the whole thing. One reason the fan is in this location is so that there's very low per, 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 per pressure drop in the area being tested. Crash. Okay, after the fan, the, the air will go down through a channel underneath this wall. It flows through the edge of the channel, turns around and fl fl flows back through, through another channel. Its job is to pick up any heat out of the wall and to keep the wall at, at a nearly constant temperature. That, that way it settles a lot faster if you, if you change the, the, the amount of wattage in here. From here, the air flows th through the main chamber, and then it goes out through, through another set, set of baffles and another temperature sensor. And you're measuring the temperature rise from this sensor to this sensor. And we're also measuring the amount of power going in the fan, and it, because that, that, that's adding heat in the process here. And uh, that's relatively constant anyway. So anyway, once this whole thing is set up and you have a unit under test inside, what you do is, is uh, uh, automatically calibrate it. It goes through a through a, a stepped calibration. And the calibration steps up by, by adding one watt, then five watts, then 10 watts, it, all through, through the range that you pl pl plan on actually using. It makes a calibration curve which factors out any losses, any, any inaccuracies in the whole thing. And that curve is used as, as long as you don't ch ch change any major airflow. And it's pretty easy to, 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 to automatically calibrate it again if, if you change anything. So that's the idea. The main question is, has anybody got any criticism or ideas how, how to make it better? Thank you.